an article uh, on the AnswersInGenesis.org website uh, about abortion rights, or at least the claim from Time magazine that abortion rights have been diminished since Roe versus Wade. That's going to be news to a lot of pro-life people. So we want to welcome uh, Dr. Elizabeth Mitchell. Uh, doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mitchell. I'm Tim with Ed. Uh, what was your article about? Uh, basically, because it's the 40th anniversary of, of Roe v. Wade, there's been a lot of uh, articles come up in the press, and one in particular uh, was this one in Time that suggested that um, things have been getting worse for the pro-choice crowd since Roe v. Wade, that they got their rights and that they've been gradually chiseled away and states have been allowed to enact uh, laws restricting or somehow limiting any of the abortion rights. Um, and the, the sorts of things that they mentioned are complaints about waiting periods. For example, the idea that a woman would need to make an appointment at least 24 hours before she actually showed up for the appointment to have the abortion, so to, uh, implying that she didn't really need the time to think about it. Um, right, uh, the the uh, restrictions on minors having abortions without parental consent, those, those sorts of things are the things that are being complained about in time. Well, Dr. Mitchell, uh, as you note in your article, and by the way, it's a very well-researched uh, article filled with lots of uh, facts that um, people, uh, pro-life people especially, will, I think, get a lot out of. But as you mentioned, since 1973, since the Roe v. Wade decision legalizing abortion and more specifically striking down state laws against abortion, over 54 million unborn babies have been aborted in the United States an average of 1.2 to 1.4 million per year. Um, I, I understand that uh, that the pro-abortion people don't like any restrictions at all on the absolute right for an abortion, but it sure doesn't sound to me uh, like abortion rights have been diminished that much. Or, or do you agree? Has it been diminished uh, in the United States? Uh, uh, what do you make of this? 54 million, that is a lot, a lot of unborn babies. That, that, that's, a, that's really a number that suffers from creeping decimals. I don't think we can even, can even, even imagine uh, how large that number is. When we hear about the killing fields back in the, a few decades ago in the in Southeast Asia, you know, those sorts of numbers astounded us. These, these, these are mind-boggling. And, no, I don't believe abortion rights have been diminished at all. In, in fact, if anything, they've been greatly expanded. Um, the sorts of restrictions and problems that the pro-choice people have complained about are things like um, requirements that would affect normal medical clinics, uh, you know, standards for, um, for qualifications for the people doing the abortions and, and uh, for the maintaining, maintaining good, healthy um, standards for the clinics. The, the problem is they want us to see abortion as something that although they want it offered safely to women, they want it to be a trivial procedure and not thought of as a real surgery. Uh, and as a surgery, it should be subjected to at least the same kind of restrictions as other sorts of surgeries. But any restriction at all uh, just seems to rankle. But no, abortion rights have not been diminished. If anything, they've been expanded. Uh, for example, in Roe v. Wade, the, uh, the justices said that in the third trimester, which is a fairly bogus way of looking at pregnancy anyway to, to put these, these defining points for second and third trimester. But at any rate, for the third trimester, they said states could only restrict abortion if, they, um, if it was to protect the mother's health. But subsequent decisions redefined the mother's health as to include even her mental health, so that if a physician could say a woman would be somehow upset or bothered by having the baby, a state could even allow a pregnancy to be terminated in the third trimester. We're talking to Dr. Dr. Elizabeth Mitchell from Answers in Genesis. Um, do you think the, um, uh, we've talked about this some before on this program, but the way that uh, science has uh, advanced and you have the ultrasound, the 3D ultrasound now, um, do, do you think that that's going to make any difference in the national debate on abortion? you think it's going to lessen the number of abortions? Personally, I'm sad to say I don't. And I think the problem um, 
can be understood on two fronts. On the one hand, some women, uh, not as many nowadays as in the past, but some women, uh, when they're concerned about an unexpected or unwanted pregnancy, really seem to not realize that the life within them is a baby. And in those individual situations, I think the 3D ultrasounds can make a huge difference. Uh, if a person already has a concept that, um, that her, her own personal wishes and preferences and convenience is not the center of the universe, that there actually is a God in heaven to whom we're accountable and that life is somehow sacred. To that sort of person, a 3D ultrasound showing her that this is a baby makes a huge difference. And even in the old days when I was in practice, um, uh, an ordinary ultrasound could make a huge difference. That could open people's eyes to reality. But what I found years ago in practice and what I think is still the situation now only worse is that um, if a person's foundation is wrong, if she doesn't recognize that her own personal wishes, desires, conveniences, and so forth are the center of the universe, and that she doesn't acknowledge the authority of a God in heaven to whom we're all accountable, that the, 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 the advent of a pregnancy that she doesn't expect causes her to scramble for whatever she can do. Uh, Roe v. Wade, all these 40 years of, of having the option for abortion so freely available, if anything, I think has calloused uh, individuals and the public in general, and certainly our leaders, to the sanctity of life. Uh, that was brought out, I think, most clearly in uh, an uh, article that came out since the one we're talking about, and I, I wrote about that a couple of weeks later, um, where a pro-abortion writer, uh, Mary Elizabeth Williams, basically said she totally understood that in every one of her pregnancies, the 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 baby inside her was a real baby, that it was a real baby from the moment of fertilization, and that it didn't bother her or diminish her wish to, to permit abortions for any reason whatsoever at all. She basically said that, yes, it's a baby, but it doesn't count. Wow. It doesn't matter. Um, this yeah. sort of attitude is... Uh, the same attitude we would see if we could say, oh, that person's in my way, so it's okay for me to eliminate them. You know, it's in, interesting because... In ordinary society, we think of that sort of, of behavior as criminal. But when it comes to the invisible baby inside, it seems allowable. So I suppose I'm, I'm a pessimist on the front of, of thinking that we can simply show people the truth and they'll accept it. I believe what has to happen is a foundational change. We have to get our focus back on what really counts, yeah. God, the author of life, um, and, and, and look at it from that point of view. Yeah. That, hey, you I know, wanna, we've just become callous as a nation. Uh, I want to play a uh, video here, a uh, short video clip from, a, I think it's Huggies. It's a commercial for the uh, diaper company. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, Was aired during the Super Bowl? I don't know. I don't know when it aired. I just came to my attention last week, and uh, don't why I did it. Do you know? I think you know? it did. I think it aired during the Super okay. Bowl. Okay, but I, I want you to li listen closely to this to this ad, folks. <laughs> Honey, we're pregnant. We're pregnant. <laughs> You're gonna be a mom. You're gonna be a dad. There's a little baby there. Yeah. There's a human being growing inside your stomach. Yeah. <sighs> now what? <laughs> Introducing Huggies Mommy Answers, the best advice in one place. From the brand New Moms Trust. That was a Huggies commercial, and uh, I should, maybe I should have set that up better, but I think you get the picture. It's a couple learning that they're pregnant. And, Ed, uh, how did they get by the... Uh, the PC police. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, uh, the, the, the husband and the wife are saying, look, we're going to have a baby. There's a real baby th there. There's a human and being then, growing. And then they stress it even more. There's a human being growing inside of you. And now what do we do? You know, I guess to put, but that, that, yeah, the, there was a lot of talk about that being an explicit pro-life message. Yeah. What do you think about that, Dr. Mitchell? I love to see things like that. I think it, it, it shows us that we that the, the truth is still out there for people to see. The trick is getting our leaders uh, to admit it, 
And uh, the problem again is is foundational. If we've got if we don't have our our notion that there is um, an ultimate moral authority that life, human life, is sacred, uh, if we don't have that straight, then the the pregnancy that that one person is so happy about is the discardable, you know, damaged goods for someone else. Um, Ms. Williams' article even made the point that she had friends who had abortions that they were supposedly thrilled they had had who were subsequently delighted to be having a baby and talking about the baby inside. It's as if the, the status of the person inside, of that human being inside, goes from being a problem to a person depending on what the, the woman in question wants. And that's the essence of Roe v. Wade. Uh, because the justices affirmed a woman's right to privacy. And in essence, what they were saying is if a woman wants to see the pregnancy inside her as a problem to be eliminated, it's okay, it's her private business. And if she wants to see it as a person to be cherished, that's also her private business. And that's the problem. Privacy has been allowed to extend to... um, to the right to actually destroy another human life at will. Talking to Dr. Elizabeth Mitchell from Answers in Genesis. Well, that's kind of discouraging uh, what you've shared. Well, <laughs> because the reason I say that is, I, and I understand what you're talking about, foundational changes are needed in our culture, but in, in our understanding. But what you're saying is that a lot of Americans will look at that baby and go, yeah, that's a baby. But I don't care if it's killed anyway, and and that's barbarism. I mean, yes, we, it is. It's we, a symptom of a much greater problem. We're, that's barbarism. We used to think that, well, we'll just well, once it's proven that this is an unborn human being, uh, then end of story. Then people, people will change. People will put, change. Yeah. But what you're saying is that's not that's not convincing enough. People still say I, it may be an unborn human being, but. As far as I'm concerned, you can dismember it anyway because it's inconvenient. Yes, that that unfortunately wow. for, the, for people who don't have a biblical foundation yeah. or a foundation that life actually is something sacred and they're not the middle of the universe. Would, would they say that though? Would they say that about an infant, about a newborn? I, I think a lot of it's out of sight, out of mind. It very much is out of sight, out of mind. This is an invisible victim. Right. This they wouldn't say that about it. They wouldn't say that. You you would you would the same person that would say go ahead and and have an abortion would uh, would not would say they they wouldn't say for a uh, about a six month old baby six, six month they wouldn't say you can kill that too would they I would say most people in this country have not gotten to that point yet thank the Lord and I hope because never it's do. because but they're you're seeing right, it's it an invisible victim yeah an invisible it, it, oh, victim yeah. but I'll tell you when I was um, in practice. Uh, uh, were you an OB, the, the you an OB, OBGYN? Was aware of, wasn't one of mine, yeah. um, came through and was having uh, an ultrasound in order to uh, date the pregnancy. Uh, she was a teenager. Her mother wanted her to have an abortion. And the, the bottom line, the, the line that has stuck in my mind from, um, this, from this, this teenage girl's mother was when she looked at the doctor involved and said, I don't care if it has fingers and toes and an ear, nose, and mouth, I want it out of there. And wow. that's frightening. We've got, to, we've got to change the foundation in this country. We've got to get people to, you know, back to the Lord, back to, to understanding a, a biblical foundation. And meanwhile, when it comes to each individual person, I think uh, when it comes to an individual person with a pregnancy, she doesn't want that. We, we need to show her that we do love her. And she's not the enemy, but we also love her baby and and just sort of and, and realize yeah. that that's how we're going to change things. It's not only in the political arena, which thank you know, which we have to do, and we have to keep fighting for the truth, whether whether we're optimists or pessimists, we have to fight for the truth. Yeah, we're we're, we're out we're out of time. Each. We're out of time. I'm sorry, Dr. Thank Mitchell. Thank you so much for your time. Answers in Genesis dot org. Can you find your article there? Yes, you certainly can. It was uh, it was the January nineteenth article, January nineteenth this year, just before the Roe v. Wade anniversary. Okay, Dr. Elizabeth Mitchell from Answers in Genesis.